I was picking through the trash yesterday, as I often do, and I made a discovery. Free computer? I'll take it. It looks like it's in pretty decent shape. The little front panel door is missing, but that's not a big deal. Looking at the stats listed on the side, I was quite pleased to see that it originally came with Windows 7. So it wasn't that ancient. Even better, it listed a quad-core processor. Now we're talking. This Athlon 2 X4 645 CPU is pretty old, being released in late 2010. However, it's 4-core, four 4-thread, four running at 3.1 GHz, so there's certainly enough power here. In fact, I wonder if I can upgrade some of the components on this machine and maybe turn it into a nice compact gaming rig? That'd be sweet! Well, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's see if this thing even turns on. It powers up, so that's a good sign. And we have a problem. Well, let's see if this helps. Nope. Actually, listening to the machine up close, I can faintly hear a grinding or scraping noise. Most likely this means that the hard drive has died on it. Let's boot the machine into BIOS and see what's going on. Now, just hold the delete key while we boot up, and we're in the BIOS. Let's browse around a bit and double check the processor and memory and confirm that the hard disk isn't being recognized. Not a big deal. I was planning on switching the hard drive out anyways for a spare SSD I had on hand. So let's open this thing up and see what's inside. Now let's try not to break all the little tabs off this cheap plastic front panel while we're moving it. Let's give it a quick cleaning. Shout out to whoever owned this computer. This thing is pretty clean. Hardly a dust bunny in sight. Now, let's get this drive chassis out and remove the broken hard drive. I don't have any brackets to fit a 2.5 inch drive into a 3.5 inch drive bay, so this SSD gets to just kind of sit there. This machine currently has 4 gigs of RAM. I wouldn't really consider that sufficient for a gaming machine nowadays, especially since I want to install Windows 10 on this thing. Since this machine takes DDR3 RAM, and since I have a ton of old DDR3 laying around, let's quickly upgrade it to the machine's maximum of 8 gigs. Now, this can't be any type of proper gaming machine just using the ancient integrated graphics that it came with. We need a standalone graphics card that requires little power and is small enough to fit into a case of this size. Luckily, I recently came across a broken NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030 graphics card in my dumpster diving adventures. The only problem it had was a broken, burned out fan. So I simply found a fan of the same size in a bin full of old cards, swapped it out, good as new. We're going to need to switch out the full size bracket on this card to a low profile bracket. Let's find something that fits on this card. Now that the card is ready, let's punch out the PCI slot in the case to make some room for it. Beautiful. Let's hook the machine back up and install a fresh copy of Windows 10 on it. <laughs> okay. After a couple hours of installing, upgrading, and adding video drivers, our new gaming machine is ready to rock. First, let's apply a decent overclock to the video card to maximize our performance. Now, let's run some benchmarks. Starting with Unigen Superposition Benchmark, which is my go-to when testing graphics stability, this machine achieved a score of 7739 at the 720p low preset. The GPU utilization was also quite good, so things are looking promising so far. Now, let's try out some game benchmarks. We'll start off with some easier stuff. Running Lost Planet at 1080p in the lowest settings, this machine was able to breeze through the benchmark with an average FPS of 106.7. The Resident Evil 6 benchmark running at 1080p in the lowest settings was able to achieve a score of 5273, rank A. The CSGO benchmark map running at 1080p in the lowest settings achieved an average frame rate of 62.9. Now let's kick it up a notch and try some benchmarks that may be a little bit more challenging. 
Running through the Street Fighter V benchmark using 1080p and low picture quality, which includes a 50% resolution scale, this machine was able to comfortably hold onto a locked 60 frames per second. Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker benchmark running at 1080p standard settings was able to achieve a final score of 5557, which is a rating of standard. Next, we have Borderlands 3 benchmark. Running at 1080p, 50% resolution scaling, and the lowest settings, this machine was able to pull in an average FPS of 35.7. Fairly impressive results so far for a gaming machine that was built for free using spare parts. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows with this machine. We did run into a couple of issues that expose the weaknesses of using a CPU as old as this one. First, when trying to run the popular Time Spy benchmark, the default test would not run at all. The Athlon 2 X4 processor in the machine lacks the advanced SSS E3 instruction set required to run the test. This particular instruction set was not available in AMD CPUs until about a year after this CPU released. So, Time Spy is a no-go. The second issue we ran into was benchmarking Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Running at 720p in the lowest preset, it did an okay job running through the benchmark, achieving an average FPS of 37. However, there were noticeable delays in loading textures throughout the test, and results showed that the program was only GPU bound 14% of the time. So, in applications that are heavily CPU dependent or require the newest instruction sets, this machine will begin to start having issues as time goes on. Still, all in all, I'd have to give this little spare parts gaming machine thumbs up.